Welcome in, everybody. DMVR Rapids podcast here. Continuing our 2024 Rapids season preview. Position by position, and it is time. Midfielders. We wear the same thing every day, by the way, guys. <laughs> it's my We're favorite totally kit. Not what am I going to do? filming these back to back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we look great. That's all that matters. Um, taking a look at the midfield here. Uh, who's back? Obviously, Cole Bassett, right? The 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 conversation kind of starts and ends with Cole Bassett, Connor Ronan, Ralph Prizo, Sidney Tavares, and Ali Laraz, who did spend most of last year down at R two, but he is he you know he's on a first team contract, and now we expect him to really be hanging with the first team this season. In this season, Jasper Luffelsend, Jock. Lamine Jock, I believe is how it is pronounced. <laughs> if it's different, I'm sorry. And the number two overall pick in the 2024 MLS Super Draft presented by Adidas. <laughs> Wayne Favorite Frederick. Bit. <laughs> Favorite bit of all time. When you're looking at who is likely to start, we say Cole Bassett, Connor Roan, and no doubt that's who started. All of last year, that's who will continue to start all of this year. And we're going to say that Lamine Jack is the guy that they have targeted for a long time and narrowed down their six search to him specifically, brought him over on a short-term loan to buy, and we think he's going to go in right there. Uh, guys, where do you want to start with this, Yaya? Um, I think the uh, the big one, I think, is returning faceless. Right. Um, there's going to be a lot of flux, uh, fluctuating thoughts on these guys. Sure. A lot of people think that Ollie should be getting those first team minutes, should break around 2,000 minutes this year. Sure. Um, you got a guy like Ralph Preso, who I know a lot of people are out off, out uh, are out on, but I still have a lot of hope for Preso. I still yeah. think he can be that Colin Warner kind of role at a younger age where he's just a bulldog. He'll go in there and give you a solid 10 minutes wow. and maybe a yellow card. What a name. And, <laughs> I mean, you got to pull what you know, right? And then you got <laughs> then you got Sidney Tavares, who is still on the team. Rumor has it that he might be leaving, but he still sure. hasn't left. He's still using one of those U twenty two spots, right? You and have to, yeah, you have to factor him in just based on where his contract is. Exactly, yeah. he's still uh, he he's still on the team. He's right. still counting right. against the Rapids' wages and salary cap, mm -hmm. so you have to have him there. And these are three guys that I think, if given the right opportunity, could do a lot of damage in a good way. Um, but I think. The thing is, in a good way, in a good way, of course. <laughs> I just don't know if all of them are going to get the chance they're right. looking for with the Rapids, sure. and I think that's the hardest thing to decipher, especially with the additions of Lafelson and uh, Diak and Frederick. It's just so hard to see where they're going to pencil in on this. Right, right. You know, we know for sure Cole Bassett, homegrown, signed the extension, uh, kind of took over as the face of the club towards the end of a disastrous 2023 season. You know, kind of took it on the chin. Was was the guy that would be presented to media. Was the guy that would, um, you know, talk to to all of us and to fans and, and kind of was was able to take the load of a bad season on himself instead of putting on some of the newer guys, you know, or maybe you know guys like uh, Andreas Maxu who who you know doesn't have the English like he does and doesn't have the the connection with fans like he does. And you know, we've seen a lot of growth from him and and you know in our Hot takes pot. I, you know, I said Cole Bassett could be challenging for best eleven this season in the MLS. Yep. Um, do you guys agree that this is sort of a, a make or break year for him? Yeah, I think Cole's going to be either the guy or he's going to flame out. Oh jeez, I hope he doesn't flame out. I don't think he will, but I think, <laughs> but I think the stakes are that high for him this year. I took him first overall in the archives draft. <laughs> 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 Joy, but, what are you feeling about Cole right now? That thought to me is so crazy. What that Cole Bassett would flame out? Nah, uh, he's, he's, I mean, I don't think him. any of us believe that at all. It's just you know putting the two sides of the coin there. Right I, to me, that is just such an absurd side of that coin that sure. it doesn't seem believable at all. So, I think what we get from Cole this year is more of the same. I think he continues to be one of the vocal leaders. To the fans, um, you know, the fans are, are very much um, constantly calling for uh, more communication from the club. And when that didn't happen last year, it happened in pressers right. post-match through Cole Bassett. So I, I think he continues to be a little bit of the conduit between 
um, the players on the pitch and the fan base. Um, I think he continues to grow as a leader among the, the squad itself. Um, you know, uh, Rosenberry is the captain, you know, uh, and, and rightfully so. Uh, and I think Bassett is one of, is, is going to be the guy who's growing into that future captaincy under Rosenberry's leadership. So having those two together, um, being two of the leaders on this team is, is a really solid thing. Um, and I think in the midfield, because you've got new players coming in, you've got a lot of good players, you know, coming in that, that we haven't even gotten to yet. Sure. Um, there, there's going to be a lot of leadership, even though this squad is very, very young. Um, and I think Bassett is going to be kind of the linchpin in that midfield to kind of hold that. Absolutely. Together. Found a new level of maturity. And honestly, when, you know, we talked about it in our defensive preview. Guys looking for opportunities outside the Rapids with the national team, whether it was, you know, Zach Steffen, Sam Vines, Moise Bombito. Cole wants to make that Olympics roster, of course. right? That's an under 23 team. Cole still under 23, despite how much professional soccer he has played. Um, that's why I'm expecting one of his, one of, if not his best season this season, because he knows he's already made it to some camps. He went over to Spain, had a beautiful assist in one of those two friendlies over there. Um, you know, I, I really expect a lot from him. Connor Ronan, um, you know, I think one of surprisingly one of the most consistent midfielders in the league last year, right? Played almost every single minute, um, took free kicks, took corners, um, kind of was the only connector for times between the back and the front of this team. Um, is that kind of all we can hope for? Is it just more consistency from him? Is there any levels to this? Or have we kind of already seen what we're going to get out of a guy like Connor Ronan? My biggest thing with Ronan, and um, I want to shout out Dave from C38. Oh, he yeah. put it out perfectly out there in Twitter where he said, signing a true six is a double signing because you get to push Ronan to his true natural, uh, natural position, which is the eight. You want him to play that role. You don't need him to play right. the six. He's out of position a lot of times. He kind of looked like he was lost at times when sure. he plays the six. But when you play him as an eight, you open up his playmaking. You open up his, his assist making. And that's what he's best at, right? You want to put players in the right in the right place so they can succeed. Mm-hmm. And with Ronan, I think there's even another level. I've been very critical of Ronan, and it never was because I don't like Ronan. It was because I just know there was another level. And putting them in the right place, I think we're going to see that this year sure. to the point where I think Ronan can even lead the league in assists for a month or two. Like, sure. I really do think he can have that. He has that level in him to just push for that. And, you know, he, he won't be playing a six. He will be a deep line playmaker, right? Especially with the kind of level of guys that have come in in the attack. You're going to want to leave those pockets open for the Bassets mm-hmm. and the Georgies and the Omirs. And you're going to want to give them space to operate and follow behind. So he will still be back, but he won't be the six. He's not going to be charging the ball on defense. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be ready to, you know, initiate the counter and ready to accept the ball from the defense. Um, and I think... I think it's going to be much the same. I don't, you know, I think he's probably the easiest player to predict on this entire roster is what did you see last year? Probably what you're going to get this year, which is consistency and quality play. Um, the six though, let's talk about the six. You know, we have the probable starter with Lamine Giac, but he's probably not going to even be integrated into the club in time to really be the starter. Come that opener in Portland, right? So you have to turn to Jasper levels and formerly of the hated fake salt Lake back on the right side of the Rockies, both literally and figuratively. (laughs) Um, This guy, profile-wise, is everything you want from what was missing in this team last year. This team finished dead last in tackles in Major League Soccer, which is the worst stat you can have, right? (laughs) That's almost worse than than finishing at the bottom of the goal scored to me because that means you don't have that dog. That means you are not fighting to get the ball. You're not trying. That's an effort stat. Yeah, and Waffles in tracks, hunts, and goes and gets the ball. Right, he's not scared to take on. He's not scared of tackles. He's not scared of throwing himself into those passing lanes. And he's going to create those turnovers that you want to see in this Chris Armas system. Right, he's going to create those counters, those breakouts where you just see guys flooding forward. He'll be back there starting it and holding down the back of that attack and ready to initiate defense going the other way. Yeah, I know Dwayne's a big fan of Jasper. Huge, huge you're, fan. you're the Asper guy. Too yeah. bad he's my guy. I'm fine with via that. the as R long guys as he's draft. somebody's guy. I don't care as long as he got <laughs> drafted. Uh, no, I, I mean you you hit it right on the head. 
the thing is, uh, one, he's gonna he's going to be attacking guys. Yes. He is he is marked to be the troublesome guy. Right. You know, he mix it up. Get in there. He's going to be the pest. And um, he's going to be the guy that I think other squads are going to be uh, afraid of. They're going to be a little worried about coming into his zone uh, because he's going to come after you. Um, I, the other side of that is, you know, we, we talked about who might get the most cards (laughs) depending on minutes. Could be Lofelsen. like. Oh yeah, honestly, I like that call. You know, I think that's a really good call. It, it, and so you know, I, it comes with, and I'm okay with that. By the way, sure. You, know, you you have to establish a presence of last year and the year before on defense, both from the midfield and back into the back line. We were pushovers. You know, we were a safe. traffic cones. Yes, that is not going to be the case when Jasper's on the field, like he is going to make his presence known and he is going to make you pay when you bring the ball down. And we need to have a little bit of that, like caution, right? You know, we've moved from, you know, traffic cones to now it's going to be full on caution tape, right? Make people right? think about what they're doing back there. Yes. Uh, love that. All right. It is time. One big question. We each ask one big question about each positional grouping. Dwayne, we will start with you. What is your 2024 one big question for the midfield? right on what we were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, Who emerges as that starting defensive midfielder? Is it Jack? Uh, You have to assume he's going to play. We may not see him starting until game three because he's got to get here first. He's got to get into the squad uh, and then he's going to get minutes, but there's only six months to see what he has before this loan rolls, you know, it terminates. So uh, he has, he has six months to prove, does he deserve a contract? Um, at the same time, Lofelson is the dirty work guy. He is the hunter, not just during the game, but he's going to be hunting down this position to start. Yeah. So it should be a great thing for Rapids fans at the six, because there's two guys who have everything to prove because they both want to be starters. Right. There's no better position for us to be in. Love that. Love that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your one big question. My big question is, can Cole keep cultivating his game? Oh, cultivating. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I can't take credit for that. That was one of our <laughs> commenters. Love that. Um, forgot who you guys are, but shout out. Um, it was a great call by you guys. By great call. Um, we love it. But the whole thing with Cole, right, is I we saw he started off the year very slow. We were very disappointed. There was a lot of things thrown his way that maybe he wasn't ready for it, just trying to be a leader, right? And at the end of the season, you saw him really pick it up. He scored a shit ton of goals, and he did a good job. Now it's just, can he continue it in the two new season with a little bit, with a squad with more depth where he might be a key piece, but he might not be the key piece. All I want to see is Cole keep doing what he did at the end of last year. And hopefully he can get to that spot where he is the guy. And it's just like, okay, he made it. He's there. We know what you're getting from Cole every week. And it's not a thing where it's like, is he off this week? Is he on? I just want him to be consistent at the highest level he can be. Right. I, I mean, I think so. You know, you, you look back at some of those, there's the five best goals of the year in, in the Apple package for, for the Rapids, and you see that that goal against Columbus, that mm. big arching top yeah. corner, and, you know, he has it. I mean, I think he had three of those five goals, right? Correct. He is, he's going to be him this year, and, and I think that's a really good call there. Uh, my one big question is, can Ollie LaRaz finally break in to the first team? No doubt Ollie has it. He... Uh, dominated MLS next pro last year. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and clearly he's above that level, but is his level being a consistent MLS contributor? He has tons of chemistry with these guys. He's played with the Bassets of the, of this team, right? He's played with uh, the yappies and, and a lot of these guys he's been around. He's played, I mean, he's played with any of these guys in the familiar faces. He's played with them, right? He's kicked it around. Um, can he adapt to the armist system? Is he going to be more of a, 
Six eight, is he gonna be more of an eight ten? How's he is he gonna be the deep line playmaker? Is he gonna be a holding guy? Like what where does he fit in? How can he adapt what he did so well last year in R2 where he was arguably the best midfielder in the league? Can he do that at the next level? Can he challenge a thousand minutes? Because I think a thousand minutes you're looking, you know, that's about where you get from guys like Prizo, um, Jonathan Lewis, Cabral, those kind yeah. of bench guys who are mainstays, you're looking at about a thousand minutes a season. Can he reach that mark? Yeah, and the whole thing with Ollie right? Like, we know what he has. He's coming off an ACL tear two years ago. Right. Last year was the year that he could just kind of got ready for the game. He kind of got his feet wet again. Now it's time. Can you take it up a notch? Can you prove to us what you wanted to do and what we saw last year? Can you do it at the highest level in America? And that's what we want from Ollie. And my, if, to answer your question, I think it's going to be a yes. I think he'll even break the 2,000-minute mark, honestly. It's a lot of minutes. It's I a mean, lot you're basically a starter at that point. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think it's just going to be a huge rotation guy along with either Giac or Loffelson. Love that. Love that. All right, guys, that'll do it for our midfield position group. Tune in next time as we talk forwards.